There are two ways to name elk kinds, like other functional groups. The so-called common names and the systematic names. The really good news is that there's only one common name that you really need to know. And that's acetylene. It's one of the simplest, smallest molecules on the planet. If there's something attached to acetylene, you simply name the substituent and call it an acetylene. Bromoacetylene is an example. Final acetylene is another example. I picked this one just to remind you that that group that I've got here highlighted in blue is the vinyl group. It's ethylene missing a hydrogen. So we have vinyl acetylene. The rules for naming alkynes by the systematic nomenclature, the so-called IUPAC names, are the same as the rules we use for alkenes. Step one is to identify the highest priority functional group. And the second step is to find the longest chain that contains that highest priority functional group. Once you've done that, you count the carbons in that longest chain and give the molecule the appropriate alkane name for that length of chain. Then you change the end of that alkane name to designate the functional groups that are in the molecule. You put the highest priority functional group last. There's a special little wrinkle for alkynes about this that I'll get to. Once you've done all that, you identify any substituents that are attached to that longest chain. You name them and place them at the front of the name in alphabetical order. Then you need to number the chain so you can use those numbers to designate where the substituents are and where the functional groups are. Then you place the numbers in front of the functional groups and the substituents to show where they are. And finally, if there are any stereochemical designations that need to be made, you put them way in front of the molecule so let's look at a few examples and get some practice. Here's the structure I've drawn using the bond line approach. Notice that I've left a little break at either end of the triple bond, just to make sure we remind us that we have carbons there. And in fact, in any case, I like to go through and put dots where the carbons are, just to make sure we get them all counted right. The highest priority of functional group is the triple bond. There's a five carbon chain that contains the triple bond. So the alkane name for this five carbon chain would be pentane, and we need to change that A-N-E to Y-N-E to tell us it's an alkyne. There are no substituents to identify, so we can go straight to numbering the carbon chain. We'll number from the end that's closest to the alkyne, and put the number of the alkyne carbon that's closest to the end in front of the name. There's no more to do. We're done. This is two pentane. Here's an alkyne that has a substituent. We first need to identify that the alkyne is the highest priority functional group. Of course it is. And identify the longest chain that contains that alkyne. Again, I'll put dots at the carbon atoms, which lets me see that the longest chain that contains the triple bond is six carbons long. If this were an alkane, we'd call it hexane. So we'll write that name down first and change the ending to indicate that we have an alkyne. We have one substituent, an ethyl group. So we add that word in front of hexane. We'll number the longest chain, starting with the N that is closest to the functional group. That's easy. Put the numbers appropriately in front of the word hexane and ethyl. Three ethyl, one hexane. Now notice that this carbon is a stereogenic center and it could have just a single chirality. Take a look. I've written the same molecule but now I've indicated what the chirality is at the stereogenic center, so we need to name it. This molecule has exactly the same name with an R or S stereochemical designation out in front. To determine that, we use the kahn ingo prelog rules and make sure that the lowest priority substituent is away from us. Those rules put this carbon as the highest priority, this one is second, and this one is third. The fourth priority group is away from us, so we're ready to make the assignment. We move from 1 to 2 to 3 in a counterclockwise direction. So this is the S configuration. Take a look at this example. Now we have two functional groups, an alkene and an alkyne. I've picked those to illustrate an important point. We number from the end of the chain that gets us to either of the functional groups the quickest. In this case, if we number from the left, we get to a functional group as carbon number 2. But if we number from the right, it's carbon number three before we get to a functional group. So we'll number from the left. And if this were an alkane, we call it heptane. 
we need to replace the a and e of heptane with an ein and with an ein. And the rule is you always write the ein first and then ein after that. And you can see I left places for the numbers. This is a 4 ein and a 2 ein. Hept 4 ein, 2 ein. If we had one less carbon, the situation is slightly different. Now we can number from either end and get to a functional group with number 2. In a case like this, where there's a tie, we number from the end that's closest to the alkene. There are six carbons in the longest chain, so this would be a hexane if we were an alkane. And we need to change the ane of the hexane to indicate that it's an enine. Again, the ine is at the end of the name, regardless of the numbering. And then we'll put the numbers in. This structure is hex 2 ene 4 ine. Now notice that this double bond could have stereochemistry that's shown. Just for practice, let me draw out a structure that shows the stereochemistry of the alkene portion of the molecule. This structure has the same systematic name as the structure above, except now it needs a stereochemical designator. We'll assign E or C to the stereochemistry of that alkene double bond. To do that, we'll look at the left-hand alkene carbon and circle the highest priority group that's attached to it. And then we'll look at the right-hand alkene carbon and circle the highest priority group that's attached to it. These groups are on opposite sides of the double bond, so the stereochemistry is E, which we'll put in front of this name. And finally, let's look at one more example. I wanted to illustrate the use of the acetylenic group as a substituent. When these carbons that I've highlighted in blue are a substituent, it's the ethyl group. The alkene is a cyclohexadiene, and we start numbering at one end of the diene and number all four carbons. I picked this carbon as number one, so the substituent has the lowest number. The alkane here would be cyclohexane, and we need to change that to indicate that it's a cyclohexadiene. There are two double bonds in the ring. And then we need to put the ethyl substituent name in the front. And finally, assign appropriate numbers. 2-ethyl, 1,3-cyclohexadiene. When you apply these eight rules systematically, you can unequivocally name any alkyne. 